Good afternoon. My name is Louis Gonzalez, and I'm grateful for this opportunity to come up here and share with you a concrete vision of an idea worth sharing. I've been here since I was 16 years old, so I'm a juvenile life. And what I want to share with you is that in cities all across America, young men of low-income communities are ending up in prison more than they're making it to college. According to civil rights activist Michelle Alexander, this happens at a rate of seven to one. Another way of saying this is 12 and a half percent go to college. I'm part of the 87 and a half they didn't. At the age of 16, I was charged with a homicide. By the age of 17, I was found guilty. Mr. Gonzalez, you have now been found guilty of murder in the first degree. And under the law, I'm mandated to sentence you to life without the possibility of parole. Do you understand me? How long is life, Your Honor? Forever. And how do you measure that? Figure it out. You now have more than enough time to figure out the meaning of life. I here now turn you over to the custody of the Department of Correction. Trust me, you'll get used to it. The truth of the matter is, ladies and gentlemen, you never get used to it. You never get used to hearing the sound of a bullhorn three times a day ordering you to stand up for camp. You never get used to losing your identity and being labeled as a number. You never get used to being stripped nude every time someone else feels you have an attitude. I entered the Department of Correction with an IQ of 56. I had no sense of direction and I was hopelessly lost. I sank into the fabric of the prison culture, a culture of ignorance and self-destruction, a culture I was trapped in. I was uneducated yet secretly wishing for something to motivate me. I stumbled through the hallways of one of the largest prisons in the United States, Gratisville. I found myself becoming a follower instead of a leader, thinking that to be considered somebody, I had to be tough, so I acted tough. This state of mind brought about a number of challenges that made my life difficult, but at the time, I really didn't care because I was still doing the same things that landed me in prison in the first place. I challenged some of the hardest convicts and some of the toughest guards to fight. I didn't care about myself, so I definitely didn't care about them. Constantly, this would lead me on a number of trips to the restricted housing unit, commonly known as the hole. It was on my last trip to the hole in 1989 that I came to my breaking point. When I was in my cell alone, and I couldn't read the letters my mother sent to me because I was illiterate. And I couldn't write her back. I was filled with shame and embarrassment. Everyone had choices. And sitting in that cell, feeling helpless, I made the choice to break the cycle of failure. The first thing I did when I got out of the hole, I enrolled in school. And over the next several years, I obtained a GED, a bachelor's degree from Villanova University. And then I wrote to my mother. Dear mama, I hope when you receive this letter, you find yourself resting in peace in heaven. I'm sorry it took me this long to reply to your letter. However, I want you to know that I took your advice. I got a GED, a college degree, and I'm making you proud. I don't know when I'll be able to bring you some flowers, but please know that you've always been and always will be a stabilizing influence in my life. I felt satisfied, but I still felt like something was missing. What about those entering the prison system who are just like I was, illiterate, afraid, scared to ask for help, but having all the tools to figure it out like the judge said? The fact is, too many of our inner city kids are falling victim to illiteracy, and sadly, too many of them will be coming to prison. We want to increase the academic success rate and at the same time, 
cut down the growing prison population. This is not about one man. This is about the youth who are at risk of entering the prison system today. This is about the future of our next generation. This is about cutting off the pipeline that takes children from the schools to the prisons. This is about education over incarceration. This is what inspired me to get together with a few other guys, many of them lifers, so that we can establish a scholarship for inner city students. In six years, we have managed to award 16 scholarships in two different school districts. This is about public safety because education is the best weapon to combat crime and a quality education will detour our youth from a lifetime behind bars. This is about responsibilities and accountability. We, all of us in this room today, are responsible for and accountable to the future of our youth. As incarcerated adults, we want to do our part. Just imagine how safe the streets would be if every adult was educated, taking responsibility for maintaining their community, painting public murals, and mentoring the youth. What if I tell you that that is the reality in this institution? Here, we have men who may never see the streets again, yet they still contribute to their community by donating to different charities, organizing art shows, and offering their life stories as warning to the pitfalls of poor judgment. Just imagine us, as citizens, creating a new pathway that will bring us closer to becoming better citizens. That can impact the ill conditions of the world. I doubt the judge ever assumed that I would figure this out, the meaning of life. The fact of the matter is that a difference can be made no matter where you are in life. I would never stop apologizing for the wrong I've done, but I would never ever apologize for stepping outside the prison box in order to help repair some of the damage I created in my community. If I leave you with one thing to think about today is this. Our nation will always be blighted by crime until we come together as a community and invest in the future of all of our children. By choosing education over incarceration, we can prove that we are citizens working on becoming better citizens. And that is a concrete vision of an idea worth sharing. Luis Gonzalez, the son of Maria Gonzalez, president of the Latin American Culture Exchange Organization, contributing member to the United Community Action Network, also known as UCAN, co-sponsor of the Education Over Incarceration Scholarship, and a true testament of the power of education. Thank you. Yeah.